comparative weapons and armors series. Well, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about the katana versus the nodachi. Hello number ones, so welcome back to my channel, this is The Method on Speaking and goodness gracious I've got a lot of series going on at the moment but it's not a problem, I can take it, I can dig it, I'm enjoying this and these series have been rather, like this specific series about uh, comparative weapons and comparative armors is going quite well so I'm happy to continue it and soon I will be um, buying a Nagamaki so we will have a lot more comparative videos, we will have both, um, these sort of academical intellectual videos where we speculate and talk um, but we will also have actual practical videos of for example Nodachi versus Nagamaki that's gonna be an amazing video um, I'm not sure when I can get the Nagamaki because of course my uh, purchase or of the Nagamaki is dependent on the Patreon support that I receive from donations but uh, uh, at the moment it's going well so I think it shouldn't take too long until I reach the uh, amount the necessary amount to actually order a Nagamaki it's going to be good all right so right on topic differences between Katana and Nodachi well first of all I think it's quite obvious and it goes without saying that with a Nodachi you would have a huge reach advantage but I think sometimes we underestimate what that means. I mean, think about it. My Nodachi is particularly long. Now, there are some styles in Japan, and I've talked about this, like uh, Nodachi styles in Japan, which use slightly shorter Nodachi, but the one I have, if I put it on the ground, you can see it's basically as tall as me. So, uh, oh, of course, that, that, that means 175, basically, that's, that's my height. 176, it depends on the shoes I'm wearing. Uh, now I'm not wearing shoes, so this is why this is basically as tall as me. It's a very long weapon. If we compare it with the katana, just to give you an idea, okay, this is the, let's see if I can get in the shot without hitting the ceiling. So we are talking almost twice as long, almost twice as long. Now, this is not the difference between a shorter sword and a longer sword. This is the difference between a sword and a polearm. Given that Nodachi doesn't always handle as a polearm, um, sometimes it can be used in a similar way but most of the times it has its own way of being used uh, depending on the style. Um, I myself noticed that it is rather more effective in my opinion to use the Nodachi from a Jordan no um, I find that to be much better because of the extra mass this weapon has on its blade. Um, it's rather difficult to use with any other Kamae uh, maybe in what could still be utilized quite, quite well but in my experience I found it um, much more comfortable uh, to use it in a specialized way like for example some certain uh, Kenjutsu styles do rather than trying to force katana usage into a weapon that handles in a completely different way. But what are some other advantages and disadvantages of wielding a katana over wielding a nodachi and vice versa? Well I think it's quite obvious that with a katana you are quicker to strike but if you use the nodachi from the uh, jodan no kamae um, you actually use the weapon's momentum and you use the weapon's extra mass to gain speed and acceleration so in every time i've tried sparring a little bit with this nodachi with my friend and when i say my friend i mean my friend salvo i think you know him by now he's been appearing on my channel constantly particularly on the historical street vlogger series on saturdays um, he often uh, fights with me spars with me and i will actually start making some of this content available on youtube e eventually but the idea is every time we tried this we noticed that if I come, for example, if I am a samurai, okay, and I'm wielding this, the nodachi, let me put the katana down for a moment, and I'm wielding, wielding this beast here, okay, and I am just, just let me show you, okay, I'm a samurai and I'm running towards you, holding the weapon in a jodan no kamae, which now I can't even get, do properly because of the ceiling, so you'll have to excuse me that uh, there, but if I run towards you this way, the speed I will have to actually deliver a full attack um, is not that slower than a katana, it becomes slower when I try to do other things like for example um, even some some thrusts or some other kinds of cutting but cutting from a jodan no kamae 
can be they can be quite quick themselves what's difficult is to recover from those so if i fully commit to a blow from a jordan nokamai slash from a jordan nokamai with an odachi and i miss that's going to be problematic um, because recovering and putting yourself again in, in, in a guard position it's not easy, but it's not impossible. And in, in with training, um, I think you could speed up that process as well. But what's interesting is defense against a katana and defense against a nodachi. We often imagine that, for example, there are many ways, of course, to defend from an attack, okay, a sword attack towards you. But if you think of just simply putting your sword like this to intercept a uh, cutting motion coming in towards you. Well, if the opponent is wielding an odachi, you don't want to do that. We have tested this with my friend, and what happens is, uh, let me explain it to you, but let me put this, the, the beast down for a moment. I gave my friend a full um, helmet to protect his head, and then he just stayed like this, and I told him, just stay as strong as you can, and then I smashed my odachi on top of his, uh, of his katana. What happened is that he couldn't he, he couldn't make it like the extra mass of the weapon forced not only my weapon i hit so i, I just went past broke completely his guard but his weapon hit him as well like, it was like a double hit it was like completely so it's it's a weapon that you you need to uh, perform other kinds of counters you need a completely different way of defending yourself like other ways which exist like you know like trying to put the uh, the strength of the opponent the force of the opponent away from you otherwise um it's just it's just not gonna work like we do see some of these um techniques sometimes in kenjutsu styles where they just you know block and perhaps and they just um, retaliate but uh, against the nodachi you're gonna have to reconsider your tactical choices in combat so this is definitely a an advantage of the nodachi it's difficult to block you need to be really good at blocking because when the attack comes in full force with the extra mass it has it's gonna be it's gonna smash into you also there is the whole psychological aspect of the nodachi i mean the nodachi is an imposing weapon and you have to imagine imagine for example two samurai in feudal japan and they're going to have a duel one wields a katana wild wheels one wields a nodachi the one with the nodachi the one with the katana needs to have a very strong psychological calmness you know the machine sort of uh, because otherwise when you see uh, someone coming running towards you with this beast um it's it is scary it can be scary so it does have a psychological factor and you, we shouldn't imagine although some samurai were masters of you know calmness and everything yeah I'm sure somewhere the whole Zen Buddhist uh, situation and idea behind combat but not everyone was and imagine for example if you were on the battlefield because the Nodachi was a battlefield weapon and and you were an Ashigaru and perhaps you lost your pole arm and now you've got your backup weapon which is a katana and you see a samurai in full armor running towards you with an Nodachi that's gonna be one heck of a scary image Now, talking about the advantages of wielding a katana, however, because there still are advantages. Again, as we said, it's quicker to use, it's easier to use. So clearly for a katana wielder, a good idea would be to attack first. Because if the Nodachi guy attacks first, then your defense needs to be flawless. Because you need to dodge, basically. Uh, if you don't dodge and you just try to block, that's going to be a huge problem. But it's not that easy. You know, oh, I'll just dodge him. Uh, it depends. If the guy is a master and knows how to use the Nodachi, it might not be that simple. It might not be as simple as you would imagine to actually dodge his attacks, which could be multiple attacks anyways. So anticipation might be key. But of course you need to be really good at this, you need to be really good. So again, I think anticipation probably while dodging. So you like, you know, you manage to do a draw cut, cut him here, but also get out of the way. Otherwise, um, you know, his attack is still coming, it's still gonna land. So yes, maybe you cut him open, but he's gonna open your head in two. Preventive attack, timing and speed are going to be key. Alternatively, another possibility 
could be to tire your opponent down a little bit, like try to avoid him um, dodging. That could be a possibility because again, I have wielded the Nodachi and it does it does tie you down. Again, not because it has whatever extreme weight, it doesn't. It doesn't weigh more than two kilos, so it's not like a lot heavier than the katana, but the whole mass is towards the blade, so it's really tough to recover. It forces your, your muscles to, re to function in a different way, and it does tie you down. So that could be a possibility. Tie him down so he slows down, and then you go in with a quick, fast attack with your katana. So here is the question. If I were to go, having experienced both katana and nodachi, if I were to go to a, a mortal combat, to a real life-to-death duel, which one would I wield? Much has to do with a whole lot of factors. For example, I myself feel more comfortable wielding a katana, but I have done three years of kendo, and I've only had a nodachi for six months. Well, not even that, maybe four, maybe five months, I'm not sure. So, of course, I haven't practiced as much, so I think it's rather natural that I feel more at ease using a katana. It's just, it's easier for me to do that. But perhaps with practice, I might get used to the nodachi. In fact, I have to say that when I first started wielding a nodachi, it felt like, well, this weapon is badass, but I would never want to use this one in a real combat situation because it's just too unwieldy. But with time, I start, you know, the weapon started growing on me. I'm starting to understand how the weapon functions and what muscles and what stances work work better and I started exploring the weapon so I imagine that with time if I were to practice constantly using an odachi I might become quite efficient at using one and so could have a samurai of feudal Japan. So at the moment I would choose a katana over an odachi but that's probably just because I haven't practiced much so perhaps I will answer back I will go get back to this question if you give me another six months so I can keep on practicing and see if I actually manage to start liking this weapon more than an actual katana. Secondly, um, in a armored duel, so if I was fighting against a samurai in full armor and I was also wearing full armor, which one would I use? Well, first of all, I would use a kanabo, but if the kanabo was not available, then I would still choose the katana. Why? Because yes, the extra mass of the nodachi might be good if you smash it against the helmet of your opponent, um, because perhaps it might stun him. But on the other hand, it's quite thin, the blade, so it wouldn't achieve as much as a kanabo would, for example. Whereas with the katana, what I would try doing, it being easier to handle, um, I would try thrusting and try to find uh, those areas such as the, you know, thrusting in the throat, thrusting under the armpit, which would be rather difficult to do with a nodachi, so definitely not for armoured combat. Um, for that, a katana would be a better choice. And perhaps even a tanto, like if I really was having to uh, fight a, a, a samurai um, and we were you know, exchanging blows, I might switch into a tanto and go for actual hand-to-hand -hand combat jujutsu, put him on the ground in, and stick the tanto in his throat underneath, underneath his mempo if he's wearing one. If he's not wearing one, then it would be even better. But, you know, that sort of precision strike, that sort of the sort of precision you need in armor to ar armored combat, uh, the Nodachi would not be a good choice. Definitely a cannibal would be if you really want to go for devastating attacks. If not, a Tanto would be a good choice, in my humble opinion. Last but not least, what is my opinion on what Miyamoto Musashi says in the wind scroll, because in the wind scroll, as I have made a video about it, Miyamoto Musashi does talk about extra long swords, and I believe his meaning is talking about Nodachi. Now, he's not particularly fond on those. I think that's quite clear from what we can read. But I don't totally agree. I mean, I understand why, and at the end of the day, he's dual wielding anyways, so for him it wouldn't really make sense to wield a Nodachi, because you can't dual wield with a Nodachi, so I can understand the tactical choice there. On the other hand, I, I do see some positive aspects in Anodachi, which he doesn't seem to see. Um, so I don't 100% agree with what he says. At this moment, I would still agree with him that I would go for a katana in a duel rather than Anodachi. So the extra length and the extra range I gain with Anodachi is at, ex at the expenses of other very important aspects of dueling and combat and actually controlling and operating your weapon. So at the moment, I don't see an actual balance in what I gain against what I lose. But again, I still need to practice with it, so we will get back to this in a few months and we'll see if my opinion has changed on the Japanese Nodachi.
Alright number ones, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. If you like this series, please consider sharing it with your friends on your social networks. So as I was saying, quite a lot of series at the moment. I've got the Yokai series on Japanese folklore. I've got this weapons and armors, comparative weapons and comparative armors series. I've got the Saturday historical street vlogger series. But of course, if you have other things that you'd like me to talk about, please feel free to let me know in the comments below because some of these series were indeed inspired by some of your comments. Thank you very much for watching, and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Sarabah!